I want to talk to you about how we can save at least one hour off of your Devizes to Westminster 125 mile international ultra endurance race. My name is Keith Moore, I'm the current record holder of the race and I also hold the record in individual and double for the waterside warm up series of races that lead up to the DW itself. And I love these races. I've managed to gain a huge amount of experience from doing this race a number of times and doing the Waterside Series races on the Kennet and Avon Canal a number of times. And I want to share some of those learnings with you to help you make your racing even more efficient and effective as we get closer to Easter. So today I want to talk about portages. 77 opportunities to stretch, get kit, get food, get drink, but also 77 chances to lose time, make mistakes and step further away from your goal. Now, when it comes to portages, for me, the shorter the better. On some races, you might get out early and run long. If you see the World Championships, that's what you'll do in order to be able to get in a good position for those things. But for this race, it's 125 miles. For a lot of people, it's around, well, over 20 hours. And you want to preserve your body as much as you can, especially in the early part of the race. So trying to make this race as simple as possible and stop your heart rate jumping up and down makes a big, big difference. So when it comes to the portages, leave it as late as possible. Get around the lock gates, get in the other side, and then carry on your journey. You've only got so much blood in your body. And you want to get that blood to your working muscles, so your chest, your arms, your back, your core, that's where we need to get our blood consistently pumping and that's where we want to keep it. When we get out and start running, start sending blood to the wrong place. We we'll start sending the blood to our legs and then we get back in the boat and we've got to redirect that blood back to the working muscles that we want to use for kayaking. So when it comes to the running side of things, keep it steady, keep it short. That will make a big, big difference. One of the questions that often comes up is what to do at Crofton. And Crofton is a flight of about eight or so locks it's about a mile long. For me, I'm always going to paddle them. I'm going to get out, get in, get out, get in, get out, get in. If I get to the top of Crofton with someone else and they decide to run and I decide to paddle, 100% they will be quicker than me. They will get to the bottom of that set of locks faster than me. But at what cost? It's going to take its toll on them. I'm going to catch them up within probably within the next three kilometers and then I'm going to drop them. Then I'm going to leave them. The toll that it takes on your body of moving the blood to the wrong part and to elevate your heart rate much, much higher than it would have been if you were staying in the boat is going to cause damage. You wouldn't on a marathon running race suddenly stop 5k in and think, okay, let's get all the blood out of my legs and I'll get going again for the next day, seven kilometers. You just wouldn't do it. So why would you do it in this race? Keep the portages as, as simple as possible. Keep them as short as possible. And one thing that does make a difference to the overall time for the race is 77 opportunities is how much people faff around at the portages. So get your support crew organized. Get out of your boat, get moving. Get moving to the other side of the portage. Once you're in, then you can get your drinks, then you can get your food. And as soon as possible, get on and leave. I've run past so many crews who get out, put their boat down, have a little picnic, have a talk, have a stretch, have a little discussion about what they're gonna do next, what it's gonna look like, and then they move on, put their boat on the water, and then they get going again. All of this time adds up. It's all opportunities to stop. You wouldn't have a, a cycling race where you think, oh, I'm just getting a bit tired now there's some people here, let's just put the brakes on, stop, step off my bike, have a chat, and then get going again. It just wouldn't happen. But for some reason, we decided to do that in this race. So wherever possible for yourself, keep moving forward. If you're supporting someone, encourage them to keep moving. Get them through the portage as quick as possible. Get them to the other side, get them in, Give them their food, give them their drink, and get them to push away and get going. And one thing I want to emphasize is practice, practice, practice. If you want to get good at anything, we practice. You would have done hundreds of miles to get ready for this race, but have you done enough portages? Are you clear in your mind with your crew how you're going to get out, how you're going to look after the rudder, what are you going to do, what pace you're going to move at, are you going to run, are you going to jog, are you going to walk? It doesn't matter because the damage that you can cause versus save makes a big, big difference. We didn't run fast on any of ours. We just got into a slow jog and we got going again. And that makes a big, big difference. If you can stop your heart rate jumping too much, 
if you can keep your blood working to the, moving to the working muscles that you need, that's what's going to make the biggest difference overall. And one thing I will recommend is familiarity. If you can get on the river, brilliant. Get on the river, learn the portages. The canal ones are fairly standard. You know what you're going to get. The ones on the Thames, they're going to be quite different. So the more you can go on the Thames and learn what to expect, what side to get out on, is it high portage, is it low portage? Are you going to cut across the corner of the island? What might it look like when you get in? Are you getting in your weir stream? Learn all of those things. If you don't live near the Thames, you live from abroad or you can't travel or you're just running out of time, then that doesn't matter because you can practice this from home. This is one of the great things about portages is you can learn a huge amount sitting at home right now. Get Google Maps open and start zooming in. The ones on the and Avon Canal don't make much difference and there's too many of them and you're never going to keep track of those and they're fairly straightforward. But start zooming in from Reading onwards. Get to Reading, zoom into that first portage you're going to get to and find out what it looks like. You get out on the right is the first one after Reading. But zoom in, look at it and then just become familiar with it and trace all the way down to Shepparton. Because after Shepparton, they're all rollers anyway. After Elmbridge Canoe Club, they're fairly straightforward. There's some rollers, you walk down, you get in and you get going. All the other ones, so there's not a huge amount of river you've got to check, and you can do it at the comfort of your armchair, is just zoom in on the maps and try and get clear in your mind what that looks like. So when, it, when you're in the race and you're getting tired, talk to your partner and say about oh, which, one, which one's coming up next. Oh, this is the one with the hotel on the right, so we're going to get in the rear stream and it's quick after it. Or th this is the one where we've got to get out on the corner of the island and then we've got to swap sides or we've got to go past the weir stream and then we're going to get in over there. You, you start building that mental picture up in your mind. So wherever you can, practice, practice, practice. That's going to help you. If you can't get on the river, get on your laptop, start learning, visualise what those portage is and then you just remove a huge amount of anxiety. See a lot of people hesitating when they get to a lock up. Do they go that way? Do they go that way? If you've seen it, on Google Maps or you've practiced it a few times, that's going to remove a lot of anxiety, that's going to remove a lot of hesitation and you're going to be much, much quicker, much more comfortable and you're going to enjoy it so much more as a result. Best of luck, hope your training is going well and looking forward to seeing how well you do. Thanks very much.